Uh, hello everyone, it's Friday and uh, we're nearly at the end of the week and uh, welcome to Content Club Live, uh, which is the new name I've given this show, um, having been only on episode two. Um, and uh, in a minute I'll introduce Nicole, um, so, and we're going to be talking today about some nice social media stuff. Um, so uh, so I'll, give I'll give it a couple of minutes for people to maybe kind of uh, see it in the feed and arrive and, and, and start to, to watch. Um, the idea with this show is really to um, think about content and to think about how people use content. Obviously, we do a lot with video, but it could be any kind of content. It could be content across social media, written video, uh, podcasts, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be looking at that over the next few weeks. I've got some interesting guests lined up for you. Um, and the idea is it's the end of the week. It's fairly casual. Um, you can, uh, you can you can probably tell the mood I'm in according to what I'm drinking. So if I've had a really good week, I'll have a gin and tonic in my hand. If I've had a really bad week, I'll probably have a gin and tonic in my hand. If I've had a medium week, I'll have a cup of tea in my hand. So um, do, do you ever drink gin and tonic out of a tea mug? Just sort of asking. No, I do not drink gin and tonic out of a tea mug. <laughs> that's um, verging on blasphemous, I think. Anyway, so hi, hello, Nicole. How are you doing? Um, uh, this is Nicole Osborne and from lollipop uh, social and uh, i know nicole probably through youpreneur community and uh, chris ducker and all of those lovely people uh, we've met at least a couple of times at that conference and i think i will be interviewed on you on a couple of occasions uh, more recently you've been contributing to the atomicon uh, community uh, for the uh, recent conference that we just had there do you want to tell us a little bit more about what you do and, and the kind of things that you've been helping out with the, with atomicon recently sounds good oh david well, look thank you so much much uh, for having me. Would you believe it? It's actually the first time I'm on uh, LinkedIn Live. <laughs> I'm one of these content creators whose hair's applied but hasn't gotten through but I shall keep on trying. So thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. And obviously it is Friday afternoon. So what do I do? I am a personal branding and social media coach. So I work with solopreneurs or agency owners and I help them increase their visibility and audience and ultimately sell Else, uh, by having a really distinct personal brand on social media. I have lots of fun doing this. Um, as you can tell, I have some lollipops behind it. Uh, my original company name was uh, Lollipop Social. <laughs> the idea is that I help people to learn and have a bit of fun because we know sometimes, you know, when we have to try out new things, perhaps sharing more of our story or showing up more to our audience on camera, video that can be scary. So I love to really encourage people and, and help them practice. So yes, so you and I, uh, we met at Youpreneur, I think as you said, two years ago. Most recently, um, I actually held a French event at Atomicom 20. So Andrew and Pete, the content duo, had made their event available for a whole month. <laughs> so the community really got to know each other. I talked about how to use personal branding right now to sell more. Because, you know, ultimately, we, we're all extremely busy right now. Many of us are working parents. We, we run into, uh, kids entertainment centers. So I sort of run through tips of what we can do now to attract our audience, to, to, to really engage with them, continue to offer value. But, do you know, one of the biggest uh, talking points I find is people really doubting should they still be active on social media right now or should they not be? And I know that's something we're going to touch base on later as well. So thank you so much for having me. That's okay. It's lovely to have you. And uh, I think, you know, the kind of uh, expertise that you talk about and the things that you talk about fit really well into uh, into what this show is about and, and kind of like sit next to what we do as well. So uh, it's uh, going to be interesting to hear some of your insight into that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I suppose it's really easy to kind of sit and talk about the current situation. And I know a lot of people have been doing it. Um, I, I don't want to focus too much on it because because uh, I think it's nice to kind of think about things a little bit more broadly and also yeah. to look towards the future as well. Um, so, yeah, in a minute, we'll maybe talk about, you know, how things have changed in the last few weeks. But looking back a bit, how how has social media changed in the last couple of years? What What's mm -hmm. working now? What are the shifts now compared to maybe kind of a couple of years back? So essentially, you know, what's so exciting about social media is that we evolve all the time. There literally is no standing still, which keeps the digital marketing uh, industry, all the professionals in it, whether you're a social media manager or you're a small business owner or you're working at corporate level and you're outsourcing your social media to a great agency. It keeps us on our toes, right? <laughs> and they're literally... 
there is no strategy which will work all year in and out because everything moves so quickly. So looking back to two years ago, I would say two years ago, you could probably still get away with uh, increasing engagement with your audience and increasing brand awareness just on a sort of so, um, organic uh, social media basis. You know, it was still relatively easy if you provided good content to get your content seen. Um, but now I would say definitely, you know, if it's great content uh, on certain platforms, you really want to boost your content with some paid media to, to grow your audience and to be seen by the right people at the right time. And the technology out there, ad tech technology is just absolutely amazing. It's absolutely achievable to do that. So perhaps if we narrow down slightly, I mean, if you just look at uh, LinkedIn two years ago. So I remember LinkedIn two years ago, still a relatively stuffy platform. Then I was working with clients uh, also on my own um, posts on LinkedIn. It was all rather serious, really. <laughs> <laughs> because traditionally we all saw it as a platform to use for recruitment purposes. You know, really we would only go on there when we wanted to update our profile. Perhaps we were looking for new opportunities. Therefore, now um, since Microsoft has purchased it, the, the additional functionalities and the whole tone of voice has changed. It's much more sociable in a way. And personally, I really, really love that. What, what it has meant for work, my work with my clients is that we really had to make them step in front of a camera because perhaps two years ago it was still quite easy to just hide behind a beautiful logo and god i know i like a beautiful logo but now it's it's all about bringing either yourself or your team to the forefront because when people are making purchasing decisions they consider do i know this person do i like them do i trust them so it's much more important that we work on those connections uh, to then win the trust and for people to notice us so i would definitely say make it more personal nowadays because your audience will expect you to. And, and if you haven't tried so now, try it out because your stats will show you straight away that you will get, probably get better engagement, uh, better click-through rates. So those would be really my two key points. Yeah, okay. So that's interesting around um, paying uh, to, to kind of play, I suppose. That's the, the term, isn't yeah. it? And, um, you, you know, I, I think a lot, for a lot of these kind of things, they're fairly low cost, don't they? You can put five or ten pounds behind something and you'll just get that little boost. And then Mr. Zuckerberg gets a little bit more money in his pocket yeah. if he needs it. But um, how do you choose what to promote? Because obviously if you're posting quite a lot, as a lot of people are posting every day or several times a week, how would you choose what to select to promote? Yeah, so if, if I was a company, I would look at my organic content and what it's doing really, really well. It's almost, um, I recently had this uh, talk by Mary Smith and she compared it to a, a horse race. So the horse which wins, you would put them into the next race and you you know, you know, you give them better nutrition, better this and that, uh, because you know it's 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 likely to, to do well because you know its message has done really well, it's been perceived well by the audience, it's grabbed their attention. So those would be the posts I, I choose. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I mean, I, 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 I've said a similar thing before as well. It's kind of you back your winners, don't you? So yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a similar sort of thing that, um, and, and actually, I suppose what you should be doing is really looking at social media as a testing platform, and it's a great place because everything's quite transient, and you can kind of throw a few things out there and see what works. But actually, that feedback uh, is really, really valuable as well in terms of being able to understand what your audience. Is, needs as well just through what they're engaging with so you can kind of use it to develop your offer can't you would you say that yeah true? and it's brilliant you know I, I was um i'm a trust uh, classically trained marketeer I, I started working in marketing nearly 20 years ago at the financial times and uh, we were selling uh, advertising boards um advertising in the newspaper on ft.com and if you think about it the social media now is as you just said it's so much easier to know what themes are really sort of tapping into my audience's uh, pain points, what we're worried about, what, what brings them joy. Uh, because you can see straight away on your stats, you know, whether you're using a third party tool or you're directly on the platform, you know which content sparks a conversation. And that mm. will be one of our main aims is to spark a conversation, to, to, to engage them, because almost we're not so worried about, how, you know, how large our following is. It's about what prompts a conversation, a real two-way kind of conversation. And social media is so good for that. The other thing is you can really test things because 
if it doesn't work, you just change your approach and you can do this so quickly. <laughs> it's much different when you go into print ad, you know, it's a much longer lead time. I think there's still a room for uh, traditional media. I think it's absolutely, you know, beautiful creativity outlet. But with social media, every, everything is so much more immediate. And if you're a small business owner, you will know exactly what works and what doesn't work. There's a really interesting, uh, you probably know Brian Clark, who does uh, copy blogger and that and all that kind of stuff. He was mm -hmm. a, a couple of years back, actually. And um, yeah, his, his kind of strategy or kind of idea now is that you shouldn't necessarily need to be creating tons of content, but you can be a, um, a uh, what's the word he uses? You can basically sort of um, use other people's content and use other links to kind of test what people are reacting to. So you don't need to be creating content constantly over and over and over again, but you can collate that content and push it out through email lists and things like that so that you can see what people are clicking on and actually kind of establish that same thing without having to do tons and tons of work as well. So it's, it's yeah. a great research tool. I think it's very underused. A lot of people see social media as a time suck or something to kind of, you know, that, that doesn't give anything back necessarily. But actually the, the research alone that you can use it for is kind of powerful, isn't it? Completely. I mean, one thing I really love doing is, um, so if I know I'm targeting a certain audience is to actually go into some Facebook groups and listen to what they're saying. What are they asking? More importantly, mm. what language are they using? So I'll give you an example. So I'm a personal branding coach. Now, no one ever wakes up thinking they need a personal brand. But, you know, they'll be worried about getting sales, about growing their audience, about being as visible as their competitors. So by mm. going through these uh, Facebook groups of small business owners, I know what, what, what will relate to them. So it's an amazing testing ground. For example, if you're thinking of ideas for videos on, on, on YouTube, you know, it's, it's absolutely fine to go to some of your competitors and take some inspiration for some of the content which has worked well for them. And, you know, you will always have your own spin on it. Um, so it's an absolutely valid research tool completely. So, yes, don't just create content, content, content. You know, look at uh, some of your current content, what works well, do more of it. Ask your users for some feedback, what they would like to know about next. And, yeah, look, look at the stats. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Kind of learn from it. Um, by the way, we are live, so um, it's the perfect platform for people to be able to ask questions. So, it, you know, I can see there's a few people uh, watching us at the moment. If you've got a question, chuck it into the comments box. I've got my comments open here. I'll be able to pick it up and, uh, and pass it on. Um, so, OK, so, so that's maybe over the last couple of years, those changes have happened. Uh, is there anything that, you know, in the last four or five weeks where we've had to kind of change or shift or kind of are there strategies that we can put in place now for the next couple of months that are different from those? So what hasn't changed is that we need to remain visible. I actually would say this is a time where our community wants to see more of us. I know with my own uh, Sugar Rush, my weekly newsletter, you know, the opening rates have shot up because people are mostly working from home. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they have a bit more time on their hands. So I would say definitely remain visible. Now, the one thing which in my mind has never worked in social is that you can just pre-schedule and plan all your content for the rest of the year and, and, and leave it there. You know, you always have to be really, really agile to what's happening. And I, I know many people have just completely ditched all their pre-planned content and are looking at it through fresh eyes. So the one thing we have to be really mindful of is, is to really show empathy because this isn't a normal situation. None of us has come across this before. So you can't exactly just ignore it on your social media channels. You know, we are expected to have a real person behind those channels creating the content. So I would invite everyone to, to, to show empathy. Now, yeah, and I think you're right about, I mean, there's that, there's that danger of, of, I mean, okay, so who can predict something like, like the situation we're in at the minute? But, but the problem with pre-scheduling pre everything is that you can't see round corners, can you? I, I mean, we, you know, obviously doing some batching and some bulk creation of content mm -hmm. and the posts and things like that is valuable for your kind of time efficiency. But I mean, we look at maybe just doing it over a quarter uh, and then at least you've got kind of a couple of months ahead where you can kind of change and shift things and you still get a bit of that. And, and you can always jump on at any point where something's relevant and, and do a new post. But there, I suppose then there's a basis of, of, of content that you, you know you've got scheduled so you're not, so you can kind of get back to running the business if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and perhaps for some existing content. So I have a, a vlog coming out, which is all about naming your business. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. oh, gosh, should I delay putting it out? But but actually, you know, in 
every uh, difficulty lies opportunity and some people will have extra time on their hand to think about what to name a new business. So as long as you acknowledge that um, when you put it out there, I think that's absolutely fine. And I think from what you're saying is it's great to, to have some pre-scattered content and then mix things up and tap into right what's happening now and, and, and show empathy. And, you know, also this is such a huge opportunity because in a way it puts us, I, I, live, well, I live in North London um, everyone always looks like they just walk out of a photo shoot when they're walking their dog or walking the kids. But now we kind of all look more relaxed because no one can go to the hairdresser once a week and no one can get their roots done. Uh, and it's kind of really refreshing, isn't it? And I would say arguably it's the same happening on, 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 on the digital channels because even big corporation, everyone is working from home or most people are working from home now. So it's an opportunity to create content which is just on par with that because this is what we're used to seeing now you know people are working from home people are doing zoom zoom calls now i have to be honest with you i don't know how many more zoom screenshots i want to see on linkedin <laughs> yeah i remember <laughs> somebody saying that just about two or three weeks in you know what's your what's your one piece of advice to not do anymore and, and it was like yeah shots yeah on zoom and that was, that was <laughs> back in early march i think so yeah i mean you know it's, it's a novelty isn't it i suppose it wears off um, after a while we are just okay, too used so, to working on Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I, it is tricky. I do find it like, you know, it's, it's it's okay until more than two people start talking at once and then it all gets a bit messy, doesn't it? So uh, yeah. it takes a, a sort of a different skill set maybe that we have to adapt to, but then people are adapting to it, aren't they? Um, okay. So um, what, what then, um, how can we i mean when i was talking to you about doing this we we spoke about mm -hmm. kind of what would be interesting to talk about and one of the things that you said which i thought mm -hmm. was really nice and, and i know it's been a front of front of mind for people like when we work with chris ducker he's trying to do more of it and and it's an interesting kind of strategy one of the ways that we can kind of build a bit of trust is by maybe stepping back so i mean i think you, you know you've already mentioned um you know being a bit more authentic or being a bit more real and, you know, one of the things that, you know, people wouldn't have dreamed of doing maybe five, 10 years ago is peeling back behind the curtain of the business yeah. of, of kind of saying like, actually, you know, this is, this is where I am, you know, and this is, this is, you know, I've, I've got a, a bin over there and I've got, you know, my kids are waving at me for me behind the camera. And I think obviously a lot of the time when people work in, in offices and, and, and things, that's le less interesting, but now that we're at home, is there an argument or is there an opportunity maybe to say that, you know, showing people behind the scenes, showing them how you live, maybe showing mm -hmm. them kind of your home office, is that is that something that people could find interesting, engaging? Do you think that's a, that's a good tactic? Well, David, you know, I've always been a champion of behind the scenes uh, content, so showing how you work, where you work, how, how you make what you offer happen, because people are curious, you know, they're intrigued. Um, we don't just want to see the perfect background. You know, we want to see what does that person care about? What, what, what matters to them? What I love about right now is because, you know, similar to what I said when I walk in my local area, because we are now all in the same boat. So for entrepreneurs to think perhaps I could share a picture of me creating a presentation on my laptop or perhaps I'm using a whiteboard uh, where I'm churning out some plans or, or just showing what my desk looks like. It's not so scary now because everyone does it that way no one has got the perfect setup right now now do you know what i find the real beauty of um behind the scenes content is two things you know you mentioned that authenticity uh, and really connecting with people now it gets doesn't get more authentic than behind the scenes content um, but it's also so so easy to create. So I, I'll give you an example. In those mm. days when we could still travel to events, you know, I, I would create some posts perhaps on the train, talking about what my talk was going to be about uh, when I arrived, just the setup, uh, just perhaps just before I went on stage, you know, little nerves. <laughs> and then afterwards, how did it go? And those would usually be like short videos um, or photos. And my audience loves it because they want to know, you know, I, I talk a lot about... Um, increasing your profile by you know learning how to speak on stages so for me then showing sharing my own journey my own fears and my nerves <laughs> and the excitement of it all that's really relatable to the audience and now of course for some for some sectors that will never be appropriate but i would invite our audience today to really sit back and consider this how can i use this as an opportunity because we know people want 
authenticity. And in other words, authenticity is just a, giving ourselves permission to put our content, which perhaps is not, it's not completely perfect. You know, one of the content marketing gurus, Anne Hanley, she was uh, speaking at the social media marketing world in San Diego. And her talk said at the end, look guys, give yourself permission to be authentic. This is what our audience right. wants. And interestingly, she also talked about actually slowing down to, 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 to speed up, to have better results. And really rather than what you said, you know, not just putting out content, 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 I should really look back at what does our audience want? What are we really interested in? What, what are the hooks I can use in my storytelling? So yes, you know, I, I think absolutely behind the scene works so well. And, you know, another trend, and this isn't necessarily a new trend, but people trust marketing less and less, brands, capitalists, and less and less. You know, one of the services I refer to is the Edelman Trust Survey. So by you putting out um, authentic content, telling stories, it's a real great way of, of, of establishing that trust and you know obviously we, we love video and uh we have g5 now so video speed is much quicker and I, I don't think it's everywhere yet in the uk um but it will really make an well, impact everyone's been burning the moss down i think that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> well, the i know it's not where i am <laughs> it. it's just what we need in a know... time where everyone's stuck at home reading communication but there you go you know, I love going live, but like right now, like the one thing which sort of, I, I've dealt with situations where I held a virtual talk and my, my son walks in and I go, no, 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 it's okay, darling, get yourself some food. And I'm like, this is totally, I'm so used to it. But like, what do we do if our connection like fails? That's the one thing at the minute where I'm like, mm, everyone is on the internet. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. the beauty of live content, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I suppose, so it, but it is tricky, isn't it? Because I suppose one of the things about um, social media or creating content is that, you know, and, and you've touched on this already, is that you're essentially, you know, if you use it in the right way, you're allowing people to get to know you mm -hmm. as a person rather than necessarily what you're selling or what you're doing. Because because people do business with people, um, that's, that's the thing that I think where some people kind of get it wrong. They kind of look at these platforms as broadcasting advertising platforms. And actually, if you put the social back into social media and you allow people to get to know you, then, you know, you know let's say there's, you know, 10 business coaches out there. How are you going to choose which one you want to work mm -hmm. with? Well, if they've all just put up an advert online, then, you know, you're only basing on either price or what it says in the advert. Whereas if you can see who those people are through their content, through their video, whatever it is, then you're going to connect with one or the other of those people just on a personal level. And that's how you're mm -hmm. able to carve out your own crowd and your own niche and people that you, you know, and better customers for yourself because, because you can communicate with them in a way that they, you know, want and understand and connect with you. Um, so, you know, that's the argument, I suppose, for creating this kind of content. When you step behind the scenes, I suppose it's a little bit like inviting someone into your house. So, mm -hmm. you know, as humans, we're kind of, we want to do that. I and mean, we'll do that with our friends happily because we know them and we trust them. But when you do it on social media, you're kind of inviting the whole world into your house, aren't you? <laughs> and I, that's the tricky bit. That's the kind of bridge you've got to jump uh, or the, the step you've got to take. So... I suppose there's maybe different ways of doing that. Like you want to share some stuff, but you don't want to necessarily share everything. Are there are there better or worse ways of, of, well, of approaching it, do you think? I think you just nailed it there. You, you, you want to share some stuff, but not everything, right? So <laughs> I mean, you and I, we had a chat before we went on live, and I think I said mm. to you, yes, David, I know we're going to share some behind the scene content today. And I did tidy up my office desk. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a reputation as you know I'm, I'm German I'm organized <laughs> so I, I spruce up my office desk and I, I will be sharing that image later so I always say just be really mindful of things uh, what would you not want your potential customers to see I think that's a really good benchmark um, yeah. I used to say what would I not want my mum to see but actually she doesn't use social media so much so I think it's much better if you have something you want to share you know, is this something you're happy for your potential customer to, to see? So I could imagine them, you know, if you're like a maybe sort of a, like a, let's say if you're like a VA and you, you're really into sort of being organized and, uh, you know, helping people run their business better. Should you really be sharing that you're having an off day? Probably not. You know, I, I'm not mm. saying you should only share positive things, but generally speaking, social media is probably about informing, educating and entertaining people. I do say sometimes, you know, when you're having an off day, share something, but don't make it all about that because 
I guess everyone, um, you know, we, we want to remain positive. So rather err on the side of cheering people up if you can, because particularly mm. in Britain, I know obviously we're streaming worldwide, but in Britain, uh, either a cup of tea things makes better, right? Like according to East Enders, <laughs> or if we can laugh about something that makes us feel better. So you want to kind of foster that on your channels. Um, there's a, do you know Jack Gaseford on LinkedIn? Oh, yes. Yeah. Possibly be watching. Um, I was uh, having a quick flick through his feed earlier on today. And um, so he, he, you know, he does a lot of these kind of marketing videos and chats to the chats to the, the audience about creating content and stuff like that. Um, he did a video about a week ago where he was kind of in tears. Um, and mm -hmm. now like he far braver than, than I am, but obviously, you know, he'd been struck by kind of the, the severity of the kind of global situation and, I, and it had got to him a little bit. Um, that video I checked today has got 45,000 views mm. on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that, that uh, there's an example where, I mean, I, I know you said you want to kind of share positive things and that's true. And like to a certain bit, but it, and it takes a very, quite a brave person to do something like that, I think, to really, really bear yourself online. And uh, I'm torn. I'm torn. I mean, obviously, you get a lot of exposure from that. And, and that's maybe more of a, I suppose, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that's a, that you're exposing your humanity there rather than maybe yeah. necessarily a problem with your business. So you wouldn't want to necessarily say, you know, oh, I messed up this week mm -hmm. and, you know, like I've cocked up a client project or something like that. So I suppose you've got to look at the ways where you can be honest uh, and the ways that people will connect with and that but there are also maybe some ways that are damaging for your business maybe that's worth thinking about yeah and I think it's how you can connect with your audience right so so Jack has always like his video style is very very personal right so him doing that is actually really authentic to his brand in a way um so yeah. I think as long as it fits with your with your brand values and um it connects with your audience why why not I don't know um I don't know if I would personally do it. <laughs> I think I yeah, have this well, thing. It's just not easy, <laughs> I, I think. I don't it? know. I probably, I probably, if I felt really tearful, I, I probably um, would not go live that day. I, I don't know. It's yeah. it's hard It's yeah. hard to say, right? Um, yeah. Everyone is different. But you have to do what, what fits with your brand values. And if it doesn't, Jack, it's very personal. And I can see mm. how people really, particularly now, because it is, it is a challenging time, how... It would make people feel good that they're not alone. They're not alone and um, feeling. So, so what I've been doing with my Sugar Rush community, you know, every email at the moment, I say, look, if you just want to have a Zoom coffee, let's do that, you know. So however we can help our community deal with what we're currently dealing with, it's perfect. Yeah, brilliant. Great. Okay. Um, well, we were talking about sharing some uh, pictures, and I know uh, you you didn't manage to get your picture. We're going to pop it in the feed afterwards or something, aren't we? So we'll, we'll share it afterwards. But um, I did take a couple of pictures. You asked me what my setup looked like. Or what Go my on. Looked like. Um, so I've I've kind of got. A, I did a took a couple of photos earlier because it's quite difficult to do it with video because I'm using all the video. Um, so uh, let's let's have a quick look. Um, this is, if you step back from where I'm sitting at the minute, uh, this is my setup. Now, it, 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 doesn't, it didn't used to look this complicated. It looks like mission <laughs> control at the moment. Um, I basically changed it around quite a lot recently because I knew that I was going to spend a lot more time in front of the camera, essentially. So um, one, of the, one of the problems with, well, one of the problems, one of the challenges when you, you know, if you're doing a lot of courses, you know, live video, all that kind of stuff is that, you know, if you have to set the camera up every time uh, and I wanted to use, I didn't want to just use the webcam. I wanted to use some of our higher end cameras because we've got them. Um, that it's, it, it was, it was, it was, you know, if, if you don't plan for that, then you just spend all day setting cameras up and then having to mm. take them down and set them up. So I wanted to set up something a bit more permanent. So, um, so that is um, what it looks like now. So you can see a couple of lights and stuff to make that work. I actually shooting against a window which is not recommended. I don't generally recommend our, our um, students and, and, uh, and clients to do that because you get a silhouette. But because I've got some extra lights and stuff in here, um, that kind of works. So it used to be the, the it used to be over to the right, my um, just where you see that kind of round table. Uh, but the problem with that was when I looked back, I had this view, which was like a whiteboard <laughs> and kind of all of my notes and kind of probably oh. I'm nothing too sensitive, but just, you know, um, it bugged me anyway. It was bothering me. So um, uh, I, I kind of shifted things around a mm. little bit. So, um, you know, so it's just 
as usual, I've made things too complicated and over teched everything. But um, essentially, it's so that I can get this nice background here, which you can kind of see behind me. Um, and the other reason, I suppose, is that it allows me to move my camera back a bit. So that's the camera that we're filming on just now, um, which just gives me a bit of depth of field because the problem with um, uh, wide angle lenses and webcams and all that kind of stuff is that they just tend to show everything in the background. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I can see that from what you've got there is you've got quite, you've done quite a nice little, I mean, it's quite close to the wall. <laughs> you can it? see how yeah. I haven't set up my light because <laughs> I think I mentioned to you earlier, I was running a, a day uh, center for my son just earlier. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I've got, a, I think two things I feel, like three things actually, as you said, it's got to be really easy to set it up and quick, right? So yeah. this is my background usually if I'm, if I'm filming. Uh, because I, I know I'm in control of what's in the background and I have a couple of lights because uh, it's just flattering, isn't it? And I haven't spent yeah. a lot of time putting on my makeup. So for, for me personally, you know, I, I, just the one lipstick, I always like to have a lipstick. <laughs> so it's the light, it's where we are. And I guess sound is really important, right? And, and obviously internet yeah. connection. Um, so I'm quite a mobile kind of talker. So I always have to constantly watch out, I'm not moving too much. And I actually, when I'm presenting, I, I, I much prefer standing. <laughs> it's gonna look so odd. If, if you sit and I stand, and even though you're much taller than I am, it's just gonna look weird. So I yeah. think the key is really, is for people to just have a background which works where they know where they have to position things, but just to press the record button, right? If you've got good content to share, if it's something of interest with your audience, just try it. And I, and I know at first it can be really scary being on, on, on camera. Look, I still get nervous. And I've, this is probably now my second year doing it. So yeah. if we're not nervous, we yeah. probably don't care enough. And I think there's something about, I mean, I haven't really been doing live video much. This is really the first kind of foray mm -hmm. into that, apart from a few webinars and, and, and YouTube lives. But um, there's something about it that's actually easier than doing the pre-recorded video stuff that we quite often do with clients. Because because you can't stop and you can't kind of go, actually, let's cut that out or let's change that. So yeah. once, once, once you actually press the button, you just have to keep going. And actually, oddly, it's simpler. There's less messing about. There's no editing afterwards. And and you kind of, you know, you're achieving something similar in sort of an output. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's it, whatever you do, it's just, I think you've just got to give it a try and uh, see how you get on, haven't you? Absolutely. Do you know, I remember like first time I went sort of live into a bigger audience for so far, I was being interviewed by Madeleine Sklar, who's a Twitter uh, digital marketing influencer based in the US probably three years ago. And I remember right. she was interviewing me after I was a guest on her uh, Twitter chat, uh, Twitter Smarter, and her doorbell rang. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I was sitting there rather nervous because it was the first time I'd been interviewed at such a big stage. <laughs> she had to leave to, to open the door. So I'm you. just sort of chatting away, <laughs> as you do. But I knew then, you know, if I could do that, the next thing wouldn't be as scary. And I think generally that's the case, right? If you, perhaps if you just open up a private Facebook group with one of your peers and you go on there for like yeah, 10 yeah, days yeah. and just post videos, that's certainly something I've just come up with my Wonderstars coaching client out of a three week uh, video challenge. This is literally what we did. And you could just see how the confidence was just so blossoming. And, this is a great time to do it because there's some serious things to be worried about, right? So going on video suddenly is not as scary. <laughs> so if anyone in our audience is considering <laughs> just for fun to beat their video fears, this is a great time to do it. What do you say, David? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but it's interesting. I mean, like I know, I know at least two or three people who have never done any video up until now and, and then were terrified of it. And then when you actually sit down and kind of go, look, you just press that button and you do that. And then, and then you can talk to those people and, and they kind of have this like light bulb moment where they go, Oh, is that it? <laughs> and you gotta yeah. go, yep. And they go, great. <laughs> and then they're just having a chat like they would do over coffee or something. It's just that you're, you're doing it across the internet. So do you um, know what I find hardest in this set? So maybe we can demonstrate. So I really like, to look at you on my screen because you know obviously we're having yeah. a chat right you look at the yeah, screen yeah. let's both look at our screens but obviously uh, okay. yeah. it's all yeah. about so connecting with our audience start. and and mm. looking at the camera right so this yeah. is still for me something i really have to focus on because obviously we're having a chat so my, my brain is telling me look at david <laughs> look yeah. at his gestures yeah. <laughs> we want to connect with the audience right so it's really focusing and and once you use that you know everything else gets a bit easier yeah, that's a great tip, actually. And I was doing that now, but I hadn't even thought about pointing out the fact that I was doing it. And I think at the beginning of this uh, session, I was too busy looking at screens while I was just making sure everything was working. But yeah, absolutely. That, you know, that, 
that eye line thing is quite important. And actually, it's, it's the same when I do selfies with my kids. I, I'm kind of having to train them to look at the, the actual lens, which is across yeah. to the left, and not looking at the kind of preview in the window there, because otherwise all of your photographs have just got your eye line slightly off. <laughs> you true. use that connection a little bit, don't you? This has happened to me. I'm like, oh, stop, Nicole. We just wanted to take that picture. I'm like, no, but the lens is over there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, what I'm so amazed with? It's like how, how a younger generation is like so much more clued in. So my son said to me earlier today, yeah, mommy, I want a phone as a present because then it connect to my iPad and I can transfer things. I'm like, oh my God, you're five and a half. <laughs> it's mind blowing really. <laughs> Absolutely different world. Okay, great. Uh, Nicole, that's been so good. I've got, I've got one little question that we haven't, I haven't answered at the end here that just says top tip for COVID social strategy. I think we've kind of covered it, but mm -hmm. have you got any other last things you want to add in or things that we haven't spoken about that you think are worth yeah, one, checking out? So definitely review everything you had planned to post. You know, could it potentially upset someone because that's what you don't want to do? Um, if you're running out of content ideas, one lovely thing to do, you know, give someone in your local community a shout out, whether that's a person or a business, because we all like to celebrate people who, who are working really hard now to, to keep things going. So if you're running out of ideas, that's a really, really good thing to do. The other thing is you, your audience will probably tell you what they want to see right now, because it's those posts where you get the tone of voice right and, and the empathy they will probably share and like. Um, so those would be my two main tips, really. Whatever you do, don't, don't just have on what you were planning to. It, you do need to look at it, really. I remember... Um, yeah. I remember um, we have a, um, a for Google Pro, uh, we have a content planning tool. <laughs> and one of our post ideas was in there. If you could be anywhere in the world right now on holiday, <laughs> where would you be? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, naturally, this, this, this yeah. wouldn't work. So we've actually put yeah. together a whole bank of post ideas just which would work now because you know obviously yeah. you don't want anyone to sort of think oh my god I can't go anywhere on holiday and I'm really worried about my family so so just look yeah. at it through that lens really yeah sure yeah go and have a quick review of things great okay well thank you so much where can people find you if they I'm obviously they can connect through LinkedIn mm -hmm. but where else can people find you if they want to come and get in touch with you oh thank you Dave. thanks so much for having me so an easy way to find me is at lollipop underscore social on Instagram and on Twitter. But since we are on LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn. I am very active on here. It's, it's one of my favorite networks. So I'm right here. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, well, enjoy your weekend. Thank you very much for, um, for, for your insight and thoughts. And um, I'm sure we'll see each other, maybe maybe not in person so soon, <laughs> but at some point um, online in the, uh, in the stratosphere somewhere. And uh, yeah, thanks very much. Thank you so much. Bye.